Welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. We even have people here who are on vacation. I saw one lady said she's on vacation in Italy and she came to join us. So how fun is that? Today we're going to have some fun because I'm going to show you a technique that you can do with any of your larger stamps. They can be silhouette stamps. They can be open stamps, any large stamps that you have. And it's kind of a fun way to use them without getting too much into coloring or anything like that. Kind of goes back to basics a little bit. And we've been talking a lot lately about going back to basics and taking just a little SIP. And SIP stands for stamps, ink, paper. And that's what we're going to be using today. Just some stamps, ink, and paper. Might add a few embellishments at the end, but let's see how it goes. Now, before we get started, let's say hello to our good friend, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hello, hello. Good tidings <laughs> to all our friends across the great, scattered across the blue marble. That's right. How are you? To, how are you today? Doing okay today. <laughs> yep. Better than horrible. So what do your signs say behind you? I see the dead space pretty clearly. What are the other ones? My, that... my astrological signs? No, the, just the ones hanging on the wall. We have the dead space. <laughs> yes. We have Crafternoon. Okay. And Better Than Horrible. Okay. I was trying to remember what that other one was. It was Crafternoon because I was talking to the kids last night about the possibility of doing some t-shirts. And I'm like, I can't remember what that other sign said. So... I think the dead space is a good one. The dead space, living in the dead space. I need a t-shirt that says living in the dead space. <laughs> and I definitely need one that says better than horrible. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, so um, you have a word of the day planned for later? I do. Okay, I think awesome. So. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Tom, we'll be back a little bit later with the word of the day. So let's get started on today's technique. So there are so many stamp sets that you can use for this. And I thought I would pick out a couple of oldies, but goodies. And one that I picked out was this one here. This is Autumn Silhouettes. So let me grab a piece of white cardstock and that'll make it a little bit easier for you to see this one. I know lots of you have this stamp set already, or you have stamp sets like it in your collection. This is a great one to use for this technique. Also, the one that we just used the other night, the Holiday Tapestry, is a great one to use for this. And then you can also use big open stamp sets like the wonderful Watsonia. That's our newest stamp set by Arjita Singh. So, so many fun ways to do this. But I think I'm going to stick with some silhouettes today because we're really going to just stick with the stamps, paper, and ink. Now, what you want to do is you want to pick some colors. And I would like to do an autumn card for today. So I'm thinking autumn colors would work really well. So I thought maybe some prickly pear. I have these sitting here. This is just a piece of honey mustard. And let me look over here. Mm, what about if we mixed in some sweet mango? That's a really pretty color combination. It has a fall feel to it, and they're not too dark. That's the other thing. You want to make sure that you don't use something that's too dark. So I'm going to use these colors today, and I'm going to start by cutting four panels that are exactly the same size. Oh, thank you, Tom. Tom brought me a mint. My blood sugar is low, so I might have to pop a mint in a little bit. Okay, so we're going to cut this down to three and three quarters of an inch. Let me put my, my glasses on because I can't see what I'm doing here. Three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. Let's do that here. Okay, 
So three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. And now I need my other pieces to be the same. So this one is going to be five by three and three quarters of an inch. This one is going to be five by three and three quarters of an inch. And then my final one is also going to be five by three and three quarters of an inch. Now, what's kind of fun about this particular technique is you can make several cards at, at a time using the same technique and using these same three pieces of cardstock because you're going to have three combinations of the same thing. All you'll need is two extra white panels to make three complete cards. So let's cut them and let's make them so that we can just kind of see how quickly this can be mass produced. Okay. I know some of you like to make the cards along with me. So if you're digging around in your collection for a silhouette stamp, there's also the, um, trying to think the natural silhouettes and there's friendly silhouettes. We have so many silhouette stamps. I'm a big silhouette stamp freak. You guys know that. Okay. So I'll start by stamping my three panels first and I'm going to stamp those in my Misty. And the thing about this is you do want to use a stamping platform. So I'm going to be using the Misty for this but make sure that you use something where you can stamp all of these in the same exact spot. Okay, so I'm gonna put this just right here to the edge, like this. You can see I'm going just a little lower than the cardstock and I'm going off a little bit here. I kind of like this open space for a greeting and I did pick up this wonderful Watsonia to look at that and I think it would be nice to add like always here for you or lean on me. I feel like this would be a really good card of encouragement. And unfortunately, you know, we have the need for sympathy cards. It's not enough sometimes to just send a sympathy card. Sometimes you need to go back and follow up maybe with another card. And I think a second card to a sympathy card, always here for you or lean on me is really nice. Sometimes when somebody passes away, they get, they, you know, the, the loved ones get flooded with sympathy cards and then nothing after that. This is kind of a nice follow-up, maybe a month later, just check in, the, in on them and let them know that you're still thinking about them. I guess we all know that we've been through those situations where we've needed kind of support from somebody. And if, if, if I, tell me I'm not wrong that right when it happens, you get lots of support, but then a month later, you're kind of sitting there and it gets very quiet. And that's when that kind of support is really nice. So we'll make a few of those cards here. Okay. So I've stamped my first pass. I'm going to stamp it a second time here. I want to get it nice and dark. just put a mint in my mouth. <laughs> All right. So we have one. I love this stamp so much. It's just one of my go-tos. And then we're going to do another one. We're just going to do, you know, a couple of these all in a row. This mint is good, Tom. It's like one of those melt-away mints that just turn into like a sugar bomb. <laughs> Courtesy of Kristen in our shipping department. Yes. Our shipping department and then back in our warehouse. They both have the best candy. <laughs> Sometimes I go back there to the shipping department and also into the warehouse to act like I'm working just so I can get some candy. <laughs> All right, one more. Making a lot of noise here. But we're just going to do all three because we might as well. And then, Tom, I'm going to give all three of these away. They're all, they're all the same card, pretty much. Maybe I'll have different greetings on them, but 
just to make you aware that your job has tripled today. Oh goodness, I'm reading some of the comments and I'm really sorry for anybody who's going through a lonely time right now. It is difficult, especially as the weather starts to change up here. And hmm. All right, so we've got these three done. I'm gonna put these aside. And now I'm going to stamp each one of these three colored panels the same way. Boy, if this candy doesn't get my blood sugar up, it's not going up because that was a sugar bomb. <laughs> Very good. All right. Now, whenever you're stamping on colored cardstock, you can see it, it, it takes a couple of extra times to get it nice and crisp. And that's because the colored cardstock, well, for those of you who have ever tried our white cardstock, you know how super smooth it is. Colored cardstock is smooth, but it does have a little bit more of a tooth to it. And so you can kind of see the little roughness in it when you stamp. So that's why I recommend, you know, stamping it two or three times to get it as solid as you can. And this also gives you a really good arm workout. Okay. So that looks pretty good. And you can see they are the same size. So let's go to the honey mustard. That was prickly pear for those are, who are interested in the colors. So the kind of candy I'm eating are these. Redbird handcrafted candies. They're like little mints, but when they when you put them in, the, in your mouth, they kind of melt and you get a little sugar blast. I'm on a new medicine for my diabetes and um, still a little unpredictable. So sometimes my blood sugar is just normal and I'm controlling it with insulin because I have an insulin pump. Um, but other times this new medicine, I don't know, it just kicks in all of a sudden out of the blue and it gives me a low. So, but you know, I shouldn't say I don't mind, but I really don't mind because it is a great opportunity to have those treats that I normally can't have. <laughs> So I'm trying to find the positive. All right, I'm going to give it one more stamping. Woo. Okay. And there we go. All right. So now I've got two pieces that are nice and solid here. Give them a chance to dry. And I'm going with that third one, which is the sweet mango. And I chose colors that really work well together. And also it doesn't matter the order that you put them in. You know, sometimes when you're working with like the rainbow, you want to be very specific in what order you put it in. But if you're just picking random colors that all coordinate really nicely, it doesn't really matter what order you put them in. And honestly, with the cardstock, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. It's more when you're ink blending that it matters because you always want to be blending colors that will actually blend together and won't combine to turn to brown. Okay, I'm trying to read your comments at the same time. I have one more thing to go here, one more stamping. It's looking good. Tell me this isn't a pretty stamp. This is like one that I can never find in my, my organized stamps because it's always on my desktop here somewhere because I'm always using it. I'm, I gravitate to it all the time. And you know, I know that I'm a stamp company, obviously, but I can't help going back to the old favorites. I just like to do videos with the oldies. So, um, Hopefully some of you already have this. Probably a lot of you already have this because I've done so many videos on it. So that will be good. That will be good. Okay. I'm going to clean my Misty up now. Get all that ink off of there. And I did see a comment in our group where somebody was very worried because they got ink on their Misty on their mouse pad that they bought and they thought that they ruined it and you absolutely did not ruin it. Okay, so this is not going to transfer any ink at all, even though it's a little stained. But if you don't like the stains, try a little bit of the Gina K Design Stamp Cleaner. 
because that will just get ink off of pretty much anything. You do have to be careful if something is painted on, like a ink cube lid. You don't want to put it on that because it'll actually take the color off the lid. But this works pretty well to get the stains off. Probably should have sprayed right on it, but that's pretty clean. And I also use it on the lid of my Misty. And the only Misty that I have that I don't use the stamp cleaner on is the very, very first Misty I ever got. The grid lines on that Misty were not um, etched in. They weren't laser etched. They were actually painted on. So you don't want to use it on anything that's painted on like an ink pad lid. You know, those screens are kind of, they're, they're painted on with a certain type of ink. And they're fine, but if you put the stamp cleaner on there, it can smear that ink, believe it or not. Um, what does the Misty mouse pad accomplish? Well, it acts, see, when you get your Misty, this is a great question. When you get your Misty, it comes with a black foam pad like this, right? But you can't really, you shouldn't really stamp on that because it's kind of like a fabric. And also, it doesn't have any markings on it. And I know you can use the grid paper, but... If you have the mouse pad, now you have grid lines. So let's say you wanted to stamp something and you wanted to put your cardstock right here up against this corner. You know, you wanted to get it away from the corners because it's a big stamp and it overlaps. You can mark where your, I always put like a little piece of post-it tape or something there if I'm doing multiples. And you can, um, you can have something like a grid that you can work with. And also it's got this texture on it that you can clean. So it doesn't matter if you stamp off, you can get ink anywhere on this and then you can just wipe it away. It's a sold separately item over at My Sweet Petunia and some of our big box retailers and our small retailers also carry it. So check them too. All right, the name of the stamp set that I am using is called Autumn Silhouettes. All right. Now these white ones, I'm just going to put aside and I'm going to do a little bit of trimming. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about, let's see, I'm going to cut a half inch off the bottom. Okay. So I've got a half inch off the bottom. I'm going to cut a half inch off of all the bottoms first. Not the white ones though, just these. Okay, and a half inch off of this one. We're really going back to the basics here, guys. Okay, now we can do these strips any size that we want. I did some that were a half inch and that looked pretty nice. So why don't we try half inch strips? It just makes it easy. Okay, so I'm at the five and a half mark, I'm gonna go down to four inches. I'm gonna cut a four inch and I'm gonna place these in order off to the side here. Then I'm gonna go down another half inch to three and a half inches. Put that one there, just so I remember how they go. And then I'm gonna to go to the three inch mark. Okay, so now I've got those three. This piece, I'm just gonna put aside. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, if anything. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Four inch, right? Cause it was four and a half. I'm going down to the four inch mark. Three and a half. And three. Okay, now I've got those. It's like little shutters here. My final one is the honey mustard. So we're gonna go to the four inch. The three and a half inch. This could have actually been a five minute card, I think. and the three inch mark. I had somebody in my last video leave a comment that said that 
kind of to the to the effect of like I don't care how good these techniques are, nobody's going to watch for an hour. And I just welcomed them and said, "You must be new here because <laughs> we do this all the time." And I just value the input of everybody participating and we have fun and we take our time. It's relaxing. So I think that might be somebody new joining us for the first time. Okay, so now we're going to mix these up on these cards. So we're going to we're going to pick a honey mustard one, a sweet mango one, and a prickly pear one. And we're going to lay these on top. So I'm going to go with regular tape here. And I'm just going to put some tape right over here. <laughs> and then we're going to find the right spot to lay this down. We're going to match it up like a puzzle so that it looks pretty good like that. You see? And I'm going to just pat that down. Then we'll get a sweet mango one, but we're going to take the second one, the middle one, because this one's going to go up against it like that. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> I know we're 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 long-winded around here, but we're all in it together. And I just like I just love the time that we spend together. And I didn't have the heart to say sometimes I go over an hour. Sometimes they're even longer. <laughs> okay, so now we've got two. And now we're gonna get the third one, which is that top one. And that one is gonna go here. Okay. Something just clunked outside. Did you hear that, Tom? I did. <laughs> okay. So now we've got that. And look how pretty that is. That was so simple, right? So simple. So let me put this one aside and we'll do these next ones. Now we've got to find the bottom one first here, which was the sweet mango this time. I mean, it really doesn't matter what order you do them in because you just have to find that puzzle piece, right? And I'm not just looking at the flowers. I'm also looking at these stems because we want to make sure that these stems are lining up and looking straight. Right in here, like these parts right here. So if you're struggling a little bit and you're like, oh gosh, I don't know like where, how to get it straight. Try to look at the sticks coming up in any silhouette image. It will make it a little bit easier. All right, now I think this one's going to be next. Yes. So now honey mustard is next. All right, and again, checking those sticks, those branches or twigs or stems. 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 My blood sugar was getting the best of me, Tom. I couldn't remember the word stem. Mm. <laughs> but for anybody that's worried, it's back up already. So I'm good. I am fine. Okay. That does not work. So I think what I'm looking for is this one. Wait, which one? Wait, which one? Oh, this one. No. It's the, second, it's the next one up. It's the next one. Isn't it that one? No. No. Oh, you know what? No, wait, wait, wait. I got to take this off. I got to take this off. This one is not the one. It's this one because I got to make sure that I have something for how did how did I lose something here? Right. This one. Wouldn't this be it? And then this is next. Yes. OK, let's put some tape on here. Whoo. You got to you got to make sure you have the right leftover piece too before you pick the second one because there's actually two of one of them. Okay. And then this one cuz you need like the three different ones left over. That was scary. But at least with the adhesive dot runner, you've got a little bit of forgiving time because when you first put it down, you can pick it up and move it. You just need to work quickly if you're going to pull it back up again. Okay, so there's the second one. There's my first one. And then we'll do this last one. 
Okay, this one's first this time. <laughs> shouldn't have told you that my blood sugar was fine because I could blame it on my blood sugar then. Oh, there we go. And this is a fun technique because it's very much like putting a puzzle together. It's very relaxing and and you could do more or you could do thinner strips. Sometimes you could do like quarter inch strips and then you could fill in with more colors. This is also a really fun holiday card design too, because you have, if you have some sort of large snowflake or something like that, you could do the large snowflake and then you could do the strips in red and green and turquoise that are more holiday colors. And also don't overlook your stencils when it comes to this you can actually stencil a big design with black ink and then go back and stencil the same design with red ink and then green ink and then turquoise ink. And instead of the cardstock or the background being um, the different color, the image itself will be the different color. It would be like if all of these strips were white, but this part was green and this part was red and this part was stamped in turquoise. So there's lots of ways to do it. All right, so now we've got our three cards that are ready to turn into cards. So I'm going to get my paper cutter now and I'm gonna trim around this entire thing. So I'm gonna trim a tiny bit off, just a hair off this side, just to give it a nice crisp edge. Like that. So you can see now everything is super flat there. And then I'm gonna take this down to three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch. Now I would say that you could cut this with master layouts too, but this cardstock is a little thick and it might be a little hard. You might have to run it through your die cutting machine just a couple of times to really get this area here where it's layered up to cut all the way. So, and again, I, I am trying to do a few cards now and then that take very limited supplies. For some of our newer friends that are just getting started, we can make beautiful cards without a thousand different tools. Do we love a thousand different tools? Ooh, I didn't cut that well. Do we love a thousand different tools? Yes, we do. But do we need them all the time? No. And sometimes these card I ideas are good just to have in your arsenal if you're going to craft somewhere on a crafting retreat or you're going with friends or you're going on vacation and you just want to take a few tools with you. You could make these kinds of cards very easily with just your small paper cutter, a few colored panels and, you know, some black ink. You could do a bunch of different silhouette styles. So this is a very small paper cutter and it's probably not really meant for this, you know, thickness of cardstock, but I'm making it work. I do have a bigger paper cutter. I have a tonic that I really like. The Tim Holtz one is really great. Tonic makes Tim's paper cutters and they're great. Okay, so now did we cut those all down the same size? We did. So now they're nice and crisp on the edges and now it's time to add our greeting. Sometimes less is more, right? Do I see Kathy Zilski and Mindy Egan both here? They're so supportive. They're always here. Thank you, guys. You guys are all so supportive. You're always here, and I love that, and I love you for that, and I appreciate you. Okay, now we're going to pick some sentiments. So I did pull out this wonderful Watsonia, and I think always here for you is definitely going to be a greeting that I want to use for one. Maybe I'll make three different ones. So, Tom. Yes, yes, yes. I think it's time. We're like a little past the midway point or right at the midway point. Although my cards are probably going to end early today because I do have a meeting I have to get to. But I thought now would be a perfect time for you to share a word of the day. <laughs> what do you think? While okay. I prep this stamp by rubbing it. <laughs> perfect. 
Okay, so a while back, several months ago, one of the the word of the day uh, was um, it was related to this word of the day, and and that that word of the day from way back, if you remember, was nagriculture. Nagriculture. <laughs> nagriculture. Yeah, yeah, and that referred when when your spouse kind of was like prompting you to get out and work on the yard. I so, forgot about that word of the day. It's still funny. <laughs> yeah. So um, today's word of the day, actually, there's two. Um, if you are putting off getting your work done, especially the uh, mowing the lawn, um, just putting it off and putting it off, you are a mocrastinator. <laughs> you are mocrastinating. And... Um, if you're putting it off because your brother stopped by with a six pack and is watching this Saturday afternoon football games all afternoon, then you're bro crastinating. Oh no. So mo crastinating and bro crastinating. Very football. good. I love that. Oh man. And you know what I love? I got to tell you what I love the most. I love the most about your word of the day, Tom, is how after you do the word of the day, you just fade away. <laughs> it just makes me laugh so much to just watch you fade into the dead space. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to just, I've got my acetate sheet from my um, stamp set. I want to make sure this is straight before I commit. So I am going to do one little stamping here to just see. Oh my God. I did not expect that word of the day. Always here for you. That looks straight and I like where it is. I do sometimes, somebody had asked in one of my videos, like why do a lot of card makers put their greetings close to where the focal image is or even sometimes layer over on top instead of putting it in the open space? Well, you know, there is this, and I am bad at this. Kathy Zilski could explain this way better than me because she is a graphic designer and also, I mean, she's just great at all that stuff. But there's kind of this rule of thirds where, you know, things grouped in threes look really good. And I always think of my card as divided into three areas. And so I kind of like the idea of, one third being white space, one third being the greeting, and then one third being more of the stuff, you know, like the focal image or maybe more of the details. So that's why I feel like that looks really nice. I like that open space. A little more open space will never hurt you. Okay, so there I've got my first one there. Now let's see, should I do a different greeting for the second one? Should I do lean on me? I think I will. I'll try to come up with, let me see if this, ooh, you are truly special. That fits too. Hmm, maybe, we'll see. That's gonna be one that I'm gonna have to test. And also, after you stamp your little test stamp there, don't forget to clean it off. I've done that and then I've put it down again on my card in the wrong direction and I've you know transferred ink. So you do wanna be a little bit careful. All right. Mocrastinating. Hey, if you, you know, we were talking about raking leaves and we realized that if you wait long enough, they just all blow away <laughs> to your neighbor's house. Gosh, I hope my neighbor isn't watching. I didn't say that. I think I did. Okay. So I'm going to do lean on me here. And I'm just going to get my head in the way to make sure that on me looks straight. I think it does. I got my hair done last night. Rena colored it. So I'm not worried about my roots today as much. I am going to do the little test stamping though. Okay, here we go. Little test stamp first. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to be visible. Oh yeah, that looks good. I like it. Lean on me. This is a nice way to make an autumn card 
even if you don't have a lot of colors, like ink colors in your collection, if you just have some cardstock colors, you can bring in the color on your card with the cardstock strips rather than the ink. Okay, that one looks good. Lean on me. It's true, they do take their leaf blower and blow them black back, so <laughs> I guess I shouldn't worry too much, right? <laughs> Blow crestination. I saw it. I saw your comment. That's great. <laughs> Tom, there's one for you. Love it. <laughs> okay, and we'll make this one. Let's see if you are special. You are truly special fits in here. I want to see how it looks that it's not too close to the mm. edge because it is a bigger greeting, but I think it might work. So... And the other thing that's nice about this kind of card is they're so quick and easy to make, but you don't have to put your greetings on right away. So let's say you need a fast sympathy card. Just grab one of these panels, add your sympathy greeting, and it's ready. If you need a birthday card, and these cards are very gender neutral. I mean, you don't have to worry if it's for a girl or a guy because it's very just simple. It, it's not too flowery. These are actually kind of weeds, right? They're wildflowers, but they're kind of weeds. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. And I always say that like, I don't know. I know so many guys that love gardening and I don't know why we make flowers just for girls. Cause I know, I, I know people that absolutely love working their flower garden who are guys so i think we got to get away from that and just make cards for everybody i mean i probably wouldn't make like a like a lipstick card for tom maybe i would maybe he would think where's my lipstick <laughs> Okay, so there we go. You are truly special. I like that. That fits in there really nicely, doesn't it? All right, so let's put these together. And then I think we can add just a couple little gold pearls to these. Maybe just around the greeting. Love doing that. I am so inky. And it's not from what I was doing. It's from my tidy towel. It's time to throw those in the wash. And you can do that, you know, your tidy towel can go right in the laundry. Just don't throw it in the dryer. Okay, let's get these back in the scene. Now I'm gonna do, what do you think I'm gonna do next? Black, gotta put my little piece of signature black cardstock around the outside. So I, you could cut this with the Master Layouts 2 die set if you want it perfect. Or you can go ahead and cut it to three and five eighths by four and seven eighths, and it will be better than horrible. Looks pretty good. Love the little edge. Need some more black cardstock. Here we go. Let me cut a new piece in half. Who says we don't use up our supplies? I'm using them. Okay, three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And three and five eighths. By four and seven eighths. Yeah, I should have used the one that was over here, but I use these all the time. I use every bit of black. No black cardstock goes to waste. No black cardstock was harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna just mount these pieces together. And then we've got to figure out a card base color. So my initial inkling is white because I really want the color really want this to be the focus but we can look at a couple other colors like maybe craft would be a good one or even a gray might work I know gray doesn't seem like it would work but it absolutely can work and it would be good just to look at it I'm standing on my tippy toes to see this 
we go. Two. And one more. So see how fast these cards came together? And again, this is such a, it's a good mojo starter card. You know, it's simple. You don't need to pull out a lot of supplies. Sometimes these simple cards are just, just what you need to get your creative mojo started. Okay. Now let's take a look at some craft card stock. This is what it would look like on craft. I feel like I need white under there because the table makes it a little dull. So let's just put white under the craft so you can see what the craft looks like. I think that's very pretty. And it doesn't take away from the color that this card is, you know, it doesn't take away from these colors and it keeps it in the fall theme. So there's choice one. Choice two, here is a stormy sky piece of cardstock. Put that on there. Now that feels really pretty as well because that feels almost like almost like it could be more of a sympathy kind of card or or more of that type of card. So I I I don't know. I'm just throwing them up here. Okay, and then let's see. How about if we look at a color that we never really give much to, and that's this one. This is skeleton leaves. So here's skeleton leaves. I feel like we need something there blocking that off so you can get the full effect of the skeleton leaves. Let's see, I must have a piece of cardstock that we can put up there, you would think. Here, we'll just put that like right there. Okay, so I could do one of each. That is a good idea. But I want to know what you guys think. Okay, I'm, I'm, I see, I'm, I'm reading your comments. Still like craft the best. Now, some people like the gray. Craft is gray. Love the gray. Skeleton leaves is not getting a... Oh, oh, yes, it is. I like skeleton leaves. All right. Well, okay. Um, there's one more color that we could look at. No, there isn't, actually. I feel like this is, this is the extent of it. Okay, I am... Okay, people are saying white too. So let's just take a look at the white. This is what it would look like on white. So let's see what you guys guys think about the white. I like the, I always like white. I mean, I think white is very, it's easy. You know, there's no thinking about it. A lot of people are liking the gray. I do see a brown. Okay, so a lot of people are liking the gray. So I think the gray is gonna be one of them for sure. And people are saying, some like the white, but most, most are loving the craft. All right, skeleton leaves didn't get very many votes. So I'm gonna go with one on white, one on gray and one on craft, all right? Even though Skeleton Leaves got a few votes, and I see you, I hear you, you're valid, but I'm going with the, I'm going with the majority today. I do like the Skeleton Leaves too, though. Okay, so we're gonna do a, we're gonna do tent fold cards, and I'm gonna cut these to four and a quarter. So there's one. My gray one is already cut, and I just have to cut my craft one. So the white one is a little bit more like modern, a little more graphic, right? Where the craft one feels a little bit more fallish and the gray one feels a little bit more like it's appropriate for a sympathy or more of an encouragement card. So, you know, you can kind of judge like, well, what am I making here? Maybe if you're making a birthday card, you'd want to jazz it up with, you know, sweet mango and just make it more fun. So let's fold these. So I'm going to fold all of these here at the five and a half inch mark. There we go. There's the gray. Here comes the white. Let's get that down there and 
we go. And the craft, five and a half. So then I'm thinking a few little, um, oh, I appreciate that, you guys. You're all so nice. Thank you. I don't think any of the choices that any of you made are wrong. Just think we got to pick something and go with it. Okay. So let's do this gray one first. The gray one, I feel like we'll use always here for you because that really could be a sympathy card if I needed one quickly. And it could also be a good follow-up to a sympathy card. So we'll do that one. And then for the craft, we'll do lean on me. Okay. And then the final one is going to be on white. So we'll get this out of here. Feel like you need to see white on white because you won't be able to. All righty. Now let's pick a few little gold gems to put on these. Grab some of those out of here. Got a few small ones in there. And I will get my connect glue. Let's just not going to put it on yet. Let me see where I want to put these first. Definitely put one there. I have to turn some of them over. I do want to use a bigger one, one bigger one. Put that there. Maybe right there. I think that's a nice layout for those. So I'll mimic that on the other ones as well. Well, maybe. I think maybe the other ones, because they have their different sizes. I do like this bigger one right in there, though. Again, with the rule of threes, I'm using the three gems. And then, is Rena here? Tom, did you see Rena? Somebody said, hi, Rena. Maybe they meant hi, Gina. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, one more. There she is. Hey, Rena. <laughs> it's my girl. Okay. And... Maybe I'll put one a little bit higher up here. This is where I need Kathy Z. I just need her to come in and place these gems for me. She's kind of Kathy Z. We're going to call Kathy Z the gemologist. She knows where to put the gems. I kind of like that. I think that's pretty. Okay. So let's, let's do the two-handed thing. Pick up the gem. Drop the dot of glue and drop the gem. Pick up the gem, drop. There we go. And a big one down here. There we go. One card. Put that aside. One here. Oops. I don't know where that was. I think it was here. That'll work. And one here. There we go. Boy, it's not often that I can get three cards done in a little under an hour. Unless they're all like five minute cards. And this definitely could be a five minute card. I mean, especially if you have everything pre-cut and stamped and you're just assembling. Okay. All righty. There we go. Three cards. What should I call this video, Tom? Let's strip. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> you think that would get more views? <laughs> Gina and Tom strip. <laughs> that might get a lot of things. <laughs> well, they are strips. All right. We'll think of something different. Okay. So what... <laughs> 
what are we gonna do? We're gonna give these away. So shall we work our way from the white card over? All right. Okay, so the truly special card goes to... Cheesy drum roll, here we go. Card number one goes to Gail Verlin Spresser. Hey Gail, Yay. congratulations. Yay, Gail. Okay. The second card, always here for you, this gray background. Card number two, gray, which was my favorite. That was your favorite? Actually, yes. <laughs> uh, Antoinette Lamb. Yay, Antoinette, Antoinette Lamb. congratulations. Yay. <laughs> All right, and the final card goes to, this is the Lean On Me card. Card number three goes to Mindy Farmer. Mindy. Hey, Mindy, congratulations. All right, well, ladies, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I will get these out to you. Well, this was so much fun today. Now, I was going to try to do a five-minute card video for tomorrow, but I actually have a live that I have to do in a different group for a card-making event that's coming up. I have a meet and greet to do. And over the weekend, I have been invited to go thrifting, which I love. I love go, going thrifting. Don't you love just roaming around Goodwill and places like that and just looking at all the treasures? So I was invited to go thrifting with one of my daughters. So I'm going to be doing that. So I think I'm going to take the weekend off from a five minute card video. I hope you guys don't mind. But I want you to know that coming up next Tuesday is our holiday release. It's finally here. And I'm so excited to show you our brand new holiday kit and all of the beautiful stamps and dies that our illustrators have put together for the holidays. You guys are going to just be so excited to see what we have. And um, I can't wait. I'm really ready for some new stamps. You know, I've pretty much exhausted that autumn kit. I think I did like eight or nine cards with it in videos and I'm ready for something new and I'm ready to get started on the holidays. So I hope you will be too and that you will join us next Tuesday night. In the meantime, everybody stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.